The United States and South Korea are conducting their biggest combined military training in years as the Allies heighten their defense posture against the growing North Korean nuclear threat. The drills could draw an angry response from North Korea, which has dialed up its weapons testing activity to a record pace this year, while repeatedly threatening conflicts with Seoul and Washington amid a prolonged stalemate in diplomacy. The old chief freedom shields exercises will continue through September 1st in South Korea and include field exercises involving aircraft, warships, tanks, and potentially tens of thousands of troops. While Washington and Seoul describe their exercises as defensive, North Korea portrays them as invasion rehearsals and has used them to justify its nuclear weapons and missiles development. A South Korean civic group staged a rally outside the Defense Ministry building to call for immediate suspension of the drills. The U.S. policy researchers and Japanese lawmakers are the latest visiting delegations just weeks after China reacted to U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan by holding large-scale military exercises. In speaking to policy researchers from Stanford University's Hoover Institution think tank, President Tsai Ing-wen referred to the Second Taiwan Strait Crisis in 1958, a conflict in which the Chinese military conducted prolonged shelling in Taiwan's outlying Kinmen and Matsu Islands. Meanwhile, leading the Japanese delegation was K.G. Furuya, an ultra-conservative who heads a Japan-Taiwan parliamentarian's group. Furuya criticized China's military exercises in the past few weeks in his speech ahead of his meeting with Tsai. Furuya also said the most important thing is to work closely with the international community centered on Japan and the United States to completely contain China's attempts to change the status quo. Indiana's Republican Governor Eric Holcomb met Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen following two recent high-profile visits by U.S. politicians that drew China's ire and Chinese military drills that included firing missiles over the island. Holcomb arrived on Sunday evening in Taiwan for a four-day visit that will focus on economic exchange, particularly semiconductors. His visit also comes at a tense moment for Taiwan, China, and the U.S. after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan earlier this month. Holcomb emphasized the economic nature of his visit, mentioning that the state is among the top in the U.S. for direct foreign investment and was home to 10 Taiwanese companies. Madam President, it because